Chapter 6, The Sting. Northern Water Tribe? Eric is not going to be happy about this. Did they just steal the mechs? I would definitely watch this movie. We finally made it. I love that now, the Firefox is there too. The Fire Fairy. The movie industry developed so quickly. Feels like they went from moving images to talkies in like a week. I will end the evil Unalak's reign of terror. For I am not Tuck, hero of the South! Do it, not Tuck. You're not just the hero of the South. You're our best friend. Nuck Tuckity. You two are the best oh, no, it's terrible. Arctic panda a guy could ask for. Got something for the kids. Got something for everyone. He's the biggest, baddest, stunningest man I know. Who protects the icy tundra? Can this just be the whole episode? When Unalak starts trouble, he'll punch him in the mouth. He's not talk, the hero of the South. Wow. That's how you do an opening. Have you ever tried to force a monkey marmot to ride a bicycle? Uh, not that I can recall. But he did make a fire ferret walk a tightrope. With these movers, we'll have the support of the people. And before long, they'll persuade the president to lend his troops to the war effort. <laughs> <laughs> subtle, very subtle. Not so fast, evil Unalak. Oh, I will save my true love and the South. Kill those evil northerners. Can he escape from Unalak's trap and save the beautiful ginger? Find out next week on The Adventures of Knock Tuck. Oh, so it's a TV show in a movie theater. All right. We got some major chemistry on screen. Am I right? Yeah. On screen. I'm going to save you in the next episode, Ginger. Let's work through this. Bolin, have have a spine, man. Stop throwing yourself in front of trains. You can smell Bolin's desperation a mile away. I feel like Bolin's in some major romantic danger. Oh, he misses her. Is it true? He'll get over it. Without that sale, I don't know how much longer I can keep my company going. What am I going to do? What would Bruce Wayne do? The bombs exploded in a way I've never seen before. It was like they were being detonated remotely. Like the bombs at the Cultural Center. What do you think you're doing? Solving this case. In front of a witness. Leave. Now. Great work, everybody. Yeah, just come right in, everyone. Forget them. What's this idea of yours? A sting operation. I was the thinking sting. we'd set up a bait ship, take it out into the open ocean, and capture whoever attacks it. Where's Korra? <laughs> I haven't seen her in a long time. Oh yeah, she's in the in the belly of the beast. Is this a non-Korra episode? If that's the case, can we just watch the Bolin movie? For the plan to work, we need the police, and Beifong already said no. We can make it work. Just the two of us. Unlike your relationship. Oh! I don't want to go behind Beifong's back. If she finds out, I could get kicked off the force. Nago's such a good boy. First of all, we'd need a ship. Ah, you need a ship? I got a ship! I want in on whatever you're talking about. I love being in on plans. The less you know, the better. Perfect! I love not knowing things. Varric really is just everywhere at once. I love those pigeon chickens. We need some extra manpower. What about Korra? Right. Uh, about that. Forget about Korra. I'll go talk to Bolin. Bolin's too hey, famous for you Michael, now, sorry. What do you think? I did a little redecorating. It turns out that one of the perks of being a star, you get lots of cash. <laughs> is yeah. this a marble statue of you? It's also a hat rack. We don't even have hats. That's because we've never had a, a hat, hat rack. rack. That and is a good point. Hmm. I think you need to take a little dippity dip. I don't have time to take a dippity dip, okay? I'm trying to catch who's ever been attacking the shipments and I need your help. Oh look, he has Zuko's swords on the wall. I miss you, Zuko. I'm kind of busy. You're sitting in a hot tub. I'm maintaining my instrument. As an actor, my body actor. <laughs> is my instrument. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know, Mako. Figure, Figure it, it out. out, yeah. That's what Ooh, you said to me. sweet Hurts, revenge. Oh, my instrument! Bolin's doing great for himself, except in romance. He's doing terribly. Hey, Mako. Is that Shady Shin? Whatever you think we did, we didn't do it. You sure about this? Mr. Law and Order needs our. So look who's come crawling back. What's in it for the triple threats? I am personal friends with the Avatar. I might be able to convince her to give Shady Shin his bending back. Oh, right. I think we got ourselves a deal. He seems trustworthy. Something about that smile. Keep your eyes peeled and stay quiet. 
I agree, keep quiet, mouth zip, don't say a word. That's the best thing to do when you're trying to ambush somebody, which is what we're doing here. And it's basically what I'm always doing. I mean, I am a gangster. How is he not in jail? What's it like dating the Avatar? Oh, man, everyone's asking. If I was dating the Avatar, I'd tell you all about it. I broke up with her. You broke up? <laughs> Yeah, right. You broke up with the Avatar. Like that <laughs> happened. Hey, Shady Shin! Oh, no. Mako says he broke up with the Avatar. Sure he did. Ouch. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but I think when it comes to heartbreak or things that are sad but don't really affect your life long term, I actually prefer people reacting the way they did with laughter rather than pity. One of the hardest parts of dealing with breakups is that in the moment it feels like this is something that will forever alter your life and that things will never be good again. You get really wrapped up in, in right now and you miss the long term. The benefit of having friends around like this is that they are outside of this. They don't give a crap because they can see that it really is not that big a deal. Like life goes on. There is a time once you extract all the lessons you need from these situations where you can get to humor. What's great about having friends like this is they're already at the humor stage. So they're a signal that you will eventually get there. And for me, that kind of softens the blow. And also it makes me somewhat happy when my life experience can give other people joy, you know? It's not that they want him to be sad. It's just that they, they, they genuinely see humor in the situation that he can't see yet because it's, he's too raw. It adds such a nice flavor to life when you see these things for what they are, not as signs of permanent life devastation, and then you can actually just let go a little bit and enjoy it. What a wonderful experience dating the Avatar. So what, it didn't work out. He's Mako, you know, he's awesome. Forget about me. You must capture the evil Unadok before he gets away. No, I'll never leave you. I think it's actually dangerous. <laughs> oh Cut. no, Bolin. There's no kiss in the script. Sorry, I just kind of lost myself in the moment. No, why are you acting so, so desperate? <sighs> Your girlfriend's about to die, and instead of untying her, you kiss her. Wait That's genius. <laughs> Maybe that will work. Yes, it's genius. Everybody take five. <sighs> Except for you, Julie. Grab the tweezers. I've got some neck hair issues to resolve. Ugh. That kiss. I liked it. And it seemed oh, like it's you all liked wrong. it too. You're confusing Ginger the actress. With Ginger the character. You're confusing a lot of things, Bolin. I'm totally getting like a weird vibe from you right now. It's like a minute ago when a you were weird vibe, into yeah. me, but now you're not. That's because Ginger never into you. But Nuk Tuck is Bolin. I'm a hero. Ah, <sighs> oh, that hurts to watch. Basically, he has no shot in this state because now he's entered the creep zone. Bolin shouldn't be having this much difficulty. He's a celebrity. More importantly, he's he's a usually decent guy. I think what makes him unattractive is like, he hasn't lost this boyishness. It seems to me like he doesn't think he has a lot of value. And so in order to compensate for that, he leads with goofiness. He like immediately shows you like, I'm harmless. I'm safe. I'm a goofball. I'm like a lovable clown. And that does bring people's guards down. But the trade-off is that lowers his romantic appeal because I think that, you know, people don't want to date children. Typically people, especially like an actress, right? They're looking for people who they can lean on who are interesting, confident. So if Bolin was able to self-reflect and act as though his value were even just like a tenth of what it actually is, girls will be falling all over him, I think. Not to mention he's jacked, like, come on. This is like textbook getting in your own way. Sadly, because he's putting that out into the world, he's getting this kind of result, and that's turning him into a person who actually is doing bad things, which hurts to watch. You know, you don't want Bolin to be like forcing himself on women. That's why they call me Two-Toed Pig. Because you have two Extra, extra toes. toes. That's right. Do you hear that? I didn't hear anything. Can't hear anything over two toed pings talking. Too bad. We were paid to keep Mako and that dame distracted for a few hours, so that's what we're gonna do. They're playing both sides? See, this is why I never get dates. Speaking of getting dates. I just overheard Shady Shin and Viper. <laughs> and double crossed. By Shady Shin? No. Never. Where do you think you're going? I don't know, if I'm Shady Shin, I want my I want my bending back. I'm gonna go along with the plan. But keep them busy for what though? What's happening? This is the second uh like water battle we've had in two episodes. But it's a little bit less cool because they're on boats instead of just like themselves. It's a water bender. Someone paid the triple threats to keep us distracted. Distracted? From, From what? what? <laughs> oh no. It's not me smarter than me, I have no idea. What are they doing? 
Whoever paid the triple threat stole everything. Oh no, why is it always Batman. Asami? She didn't do anything wrong. It's over. What would Batman do? I give up. I'm not giving up on you. Mako, man, you gotta slow it down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. I'm gonna find out who did this. And I know just who to ask. Cora's not gonna be happy. Bolin, have you seen Varric around? Bolin. He's becoming a jerk. <laughs> Nook tuck. Yes. Oh, hello, God. Mako. Didn't notice you there. Ah, oh, it's infuriating. There's gonna be some crazy pyrotechnics. And action. How did you rig those explosions to go off like that? Neat, huh? It's a Varric Industries exclusive. Here, check it out. The explosions use a remote detonator. Varric. No. No, Varric is a good, a good guy. I like him. No, Varric, no! Mako? He just saved my company. You think you know who hired the triple threats? Yeah. And I'm real close to proving it. Seems like Julie did a lot of things. This is Cora's vacation episode. Get away from me! <sighs> Who's Avatar Cora? No, please not amnesia. How did you end up on our island? I can't remember anything. <sighs> Alright, I'm not a huge fan of amnesia as a plot device. I think it's overused. Varric! I trusted him. There's just something about the way he said lie big and leave fast that made me put a lot of faith in him. What'd you guys think? What are you looking at? You alright over there? Nobody. Is it because they're a couple? Are you lonely? I can get you a companion. Allow me to introduce you to Mr. Banana. Uh, right here? Is that good? Right. Yeah, let's trim some of these, shall we? I almost ripped my shirt. Alright, that is gonna do it for us. We'll see you next time for the first in the two-parter, episode seven and eight.